But it's good, YouTube. Two teams left, the Atlanta Hawks and the Brooklyn Nets. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about the Brooklyn Nets going into next season. They have got rid of their best player and Darren Williams. They have got rid of Brooke Lopez. Now they're trying to rebuild with a bunch of players coming off injuries. And a lot of players are trying to prove themselves, as in D'Angelo Russell, who could, didn't even finish his rookie contract. And he's already traded and gave, they gave up on him in L.A. Then you have a player like Mozgov. He came from L.A. too, but he's coming off an injury and hasn't really been the same. You have another person in Damari Carroll. He was supposed to be the missing piece. He was supposed to be the guy. He was supposed to be the defender that can stop LeBron. That didn't work out. Now, he's in Brooklyn. And then you got the Quincy Aces and the Randy Fords that's fighting to stay in the league and fighting to continue to play basketball as a career. And then you have Jeremy Lin, a guy that's still 29 years old that can play and give you a spark. But he's still playing to stay in the NBA, too. And uh, even though he's under contract, Jeremy Lin is not really a player that you really want on your team like that because he has declined and his hype is down. You're not making as much money off him. People are not really buying his jerseys as they was in New York. And he's at the stage of his career where he's under this contract. He's still an NBA player, but he might not be two, three years after this contract. He might not be in the league depending on how you develop and if he can if he can turn into a pace and space guy and accept a roll off the bench so this roster is still going to be competitive they still have some talent like i said they just gathered as much talent as they could the roster really don't fit in the roster really ain't gonna have no identity offensively or defensively they don't really have no defensive anchors they don't really have no superstar scorers this is basically like a tryout for the NBA. Let's watch and see who can still play. Let's watch and see <laughs> what people are trying to do. And maybe like they don't to me they don't even have no trade assets because nobody on this roster I really want. Even like Alan Crabb is a guy that got paid a lot of cash and then he was gave up on by Portland. They wanted to get rid of the contract that they gave him. They was paying Alan Crabb nineteen million dollars a year. And they knew that was a bad contract, but they had to keep the talent that they had, and they was able to get the contract and send it to Brooklyn. The only thing that's good about Brooklyn is they was able to fill out their roster with NBA quality players, and they will have good contracts in the future because them twelve million, those nineteen million dollar contracts, if you can use it in trade for for picks. Because they're aspiring contracts in the next couple of years that can give a team a lot of flexibility in the future. Also, if you keep the contract, they aspire in general, which turns into cap space that you can spend when bigger free agents are available in 2018, I mean 2019 <coughs> and 2020. So you, you have more flexibility in the future, but you also could have just, they took a lot of picks in bad, they took the bad contracts to get picks because they traded all their picks to Boston and other teams to get that Brooke Lopez, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Darren Williams, and Joe Johnson team. Now they're trying to get back the picks so they can build the roster back up through the draft. So they took the bad contracts to be able to get picks. And those bad contracts eventually turn into good contracts because they aspire, giving you flexibility. So even though they took a lot of bad contracts, even though they got a lot of players that's trying to prove themselves, a lot of players that's trying to resurrect their career, and a, a lot of players that's trying to get longevity by showing they can still play at the NBA level, and they can use Brooklyn as a, a point to do that. And it works out best for the players in the the Brooklyn Nets but this team obviously probably won't even win 25 games to 30 the team is nowhere close to making the playoffs like I said D'Angelo Russell they they basically renting him because he's still on a rookie contract let's see if D'Angelo Russell can what he how is he as a person what's his motivation what is he trying to accomplish can he score can he be a superstar but if they don't they still got picks so they can either trade D'Angelo Russell if he doesn't pan out or he ain't the player that they want or he don't have the mindset that they need they superstar to have. They can trade him for like a second rounder or something or two second round picks or they can just keep him and pay him cheap and have a solid 
shooting guard or a point guard, not a superstar, but a solid one. But D'Angelo Russell, he does have the talent. He does have the jump shot to be a 20-point game scorer. But it might be on a bad team, but he could do that. And Brooklyn, honestly, they don't really have anybody anyway. So they can use a player like D'Angelo Russell in general just to bring some excitement, have somebody that people would like to watch and see develop. And like I said, he's not a max guy at this point, but he might want to have a chip on his shoulder to prove that he still can play and he still has a lot of potential, something that he showed in L.A., but he wasn't able to put it into winning or a lot of crazy stats but the roster is still going to be a team competitive they got zeller they got all these other uh veterans and players that know how to play the game they have the shooters and carol and crab and foy and they have like players that can get to the paint like jeremy lynn and then they have guys like Harris lavert that they're trying to see what he's going to become in the future and he is a guy that has a lot of potential to me. Rondé Hollis Jefferson is another guy that shows a lot of energy. He can play the two or the three, get to the paint, plays physical. And Spencer Dinwiddie is another guy, too, that can play the point or the shooting guard and can add some type of scoring. And right now, they're in a place where the future, we don't know what's going to happen. And they just going to have to collect picks and if they can't do that, which they already been doing anyway, they're just going to try to hit on the picks that they have and try to get a superstar player or a player that they feel can be one. And if they can do that, then this whole trading for bad contracts can work out. But if not, then they're going to have to continue to try to get a top 10, top 5 pick and try to turn that into a superstar. So that's all they have to do. That's all they can really do because nobody really wants to go to Brooklyn right now because the team is terrible. And now they just got to build through the draft. So let me know what you guys think about the Brooklyn Nets. I know this sounds kind of wicked and evil to the people that's Nets fans that we don't know what their future going to be. We don't know how the player is going to turn out. We don't know how the draft picks, if they're going to be good. Can they draft? Can they get a superstar? They drafted Brooke Lopez. Can they draft another Brooke Lopez caliber player who was an all-star? Can they get a Darren Williams caliber player when before he got injured, his ankles got injured? So they was able to make up the playoff. They was able to win a playoff series against Toronto, but they never was able to be a championship contender. Now they have to find young players that can develop into superstars or try to build a roster full of assets, which they have right now, and try to flip them to, into superstar players that – nobody wants or they want to leave the team maybe hey, got a couple picks we got a couple solid veterans we can equal up to the contract we'll take the guys off your hands and we'll give you a pick a couple players that's solid and we'll take the superstar kind of like what boston just did flipping all their players for gordon hayward and Kyrie, and just like okc did flipping victor sabonis and dub mcdermott and Ennis Cantor for carmelo that's what the nets gonna have to do either draft or trade a bunch of picks and a bunch of solid players like Jeremy Land, like Kilpatrick, like D'Angelo Russell. Flip those players, turn them into picks, or flip those players and turn them into superstars. So let me know what you guys think about the Brooklyn Nets. Like I said, they're a terrible team. They're not going to win that many games, and they're just going to have to keep collecting assets. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis signing out. Check out my website, NalsaPlayground.com. Link will be in the description and the conversation below. Check out my Facebook page, NalsaPlayground.com. The link will be in the description and the conversation below. All you got to do is click the link. It sends you to my website. Click the link. It sends you to my Facebook page. All I'm asking you guys to do is like my Facebook page to show support. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis signing out. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Peace.